Gravitational microlensing is, is an effect that, that was predicted by Albert Einstein, in fact, back about 100 years ago, but, but Einstein thought it could never be observed because it would be such a rare phenomenon. And in fact, about one in every million stars in our galaxy is being microlensed at any one time. And what it means is that um, the star that we can see in the galaxy, um, there's another star in between us and that, that distant star. And the gravity of the foreground star actually bends and magnifies the light of the background star and makes it appear faint, brighter than it otherwise would be. Now because all the stars in the galaxy are in, are in motion with respect to each other, this, this brightening effect is only a transitory phenomenon that lasts for maybe a few days, up to a few weeks, a few months, um, where the star brightens and then slowly brightens and then fades away again in brightness. Um, now if the, if the star that's actually doing the, the magnifying, the, what we call the lens star, if that happens to have planets around it, then that causes an additional um, magnification or bending of the light, and that's something that we can detect. And we do that by observing microlensing events from many different sites around the, around the Earth, around the Southern Hemisphere, so that we can track stars um, 24 hours a day. So I work on two aspects of this work. One is that I work on the measurements, I work on um, extracting the individual measurements out of the images that we acquire through our cameras and telescopes. And the other thing, part of the work I work on is through the analysis of the measurements, which is a mathematical modelling and analysis of the, of the data. Um, the, the microlensing phenomenon is, involves some quite complicated physics and it involves lots of fairly intensive computer modelling to actually extract out from the measurements, any of the physical parameters like the masses of the planets and such things. What do you think about sort of the future of microlensing and what are you doing there for people? The future of microlensing, the, the field of microlensing is changing a little at the moment. So in the past um, there have been several, there's, there's been two main experiments that have discovered most, most base microlensing events which have then been followed up in more detail in order to get the information about planets and things by lots of astronomers around the world. But we're now changing into a mode where we're going to have large um, dedica dedicated telescopes for um, just doing this microlensing work. So one of the new projects that I'm involved in is called KMTNet and that's a series of three um, 1.7 metre telescopes that, with very large cameras on them that are going to be installed what the first one's being installed and in, in being commissioned in Chile right now and there's another one going in South Africa and another one going in Australia. Um, so that once, once those are operating, the, the data flow from those, they'll be imaging large chunks of the, of the, the central galaxy um, at very high cadence. Um, in fact, it'll be imaged every 15 minutes and that's going to revolutionise the, the, our discovery rate. What telescopes does the data come from currently? Currently, um, I, I analyse data from up to maybe about 20 different telescopes that are all around the world. So there's the two survey telescopes, which are called Ogle and, and Moa, one in New Zealand, one in Chile. Um, and then the, the collaboration I work with um, historically was called Planet, and we've operated um, half a dozen different telescopes in different countries at various times. Um, I also work in closely with amateur astronomers operating telescopes as part of the, the Microfun network. That's the micro, microlensing follow-up network. Um, and I analyse data from all those, all those sources. I've participated in detecting about seven or eight published uh, microlensing planets now, but 